class four apparition. That's okay. She seems peaceful. Okay, um, you had a great run with, uh, and in most of these movies, there's Melissa McCarthy in it as well, uh, with uh, genre-hopping comedies. Um, how did you decide that this was the time to do a sci-fi franchise big, uh, thing? Well, I uh, was contacted by Ivan Reitman, actually, when I was making uh, the movie Spy, and uh, about doing a, a sequel. They had a sequel script they really liked, and I was very flattered because this is, you know, Ghostbusters is like the godfather for those of us in comedy, uh, but it's also terrifying, and so I was like, if I'm going to do it, I, I have to do it in a way that I know I can make it great. And the only way I know how to do that is, is to make it a story about underdogs. Uh, and so thought if I could reboot it and put it in, start it again in a world that had never actually seen a ghost attack and any physical evidence of ghosts, then I love the story of like four people who know something is real and everybody else thinks they're crazy and then they end up saving the world. It's, it's, I think it, it's a movie that never for a moment stops trying to entertain the audience. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you know, from, from the comedy to the, to the little bits of uh, like uh, cameos from mm -hmm. uh, the old cast and stuff. Yeah. Uh, so what was your approach and in relation to the original as well? Well, it, Katie Dippold and I, when we were writing it, um, just said, well, we're giant fans of the movie. If we went to see it and it wasn't us who made it, what would we be hoping we would see in it? And it was like, well, the Ecto-1, the proton packs, the, the ghost trap, slime, slimer, you know, all kind of the things that were great. But then we thought, since we're rebooting it, we can have fun with sort of how we weave those in or how we say the origin of those things came to be. Uh, and so that, that was really the fun because you're right. I mean, all we wanted to do is make people have fun. My, my whole goal with my movies, I almost want them to be like a party where you're, whatever's going on, you're just enjoying yourself the whole time, all the way through the end credits, all the way to the very final frame, and, uh, and I hope that comes across. What was the, the, the funniest part while well, shooting it? Well, I, I mean, everything, was, these women are so funny, but I have to say when Chris Hemsworth showed up, because he came, you know, he was like, we were way into the shooting, but when his schedule opened up mm -hmm. for him to come and join us as the receptionist, and it was when we did the scene where he's doing, getting his job interview with them. Because he came to me the night before, and was like, I don't know if I can be funny with these ladies, because they're so good at improv, and I don't know how to improv, and I was like, don't worry, we'll write a bunch of jokes, don't worry. And then he gets there, and he starts improvising, and he's hilarious, and like, he'll do something, and then they, the ladies will look at me like, did you write that? And I'm like, no, he came up with it on his own. So we laughed a lot that day, which is my favorite day on a set when I laugh a lot. I actually want to ask about Hemsworth and Kate McKinnon as well. They're, they're like, for this movie they were like uh, what Jason Statham was in Spy, for example, where mm -hmm. there's this this performance where it's not, it's there's not a single second where it's not funny. Oh, good. And, uh, and Hemsworth in particular is surprising because... Yeah. Uh, so how do you do, how do you draw this... this sort of performances. Well, right? you know, you just find people who are funny. I mean, like Kate McKinnon's just funny. She's just, and her, and on set every day is just like, she'll do, constantly do something. You're like, what, where did that come from? I like that because I like that level of anarchy when I'm doing comedy and something to really throw things off and surprise the other actors. And then with people like Chris and, and also with Statham, uh, I just think it's funny to subvert people's idea of what somebody is. Um, and if you know them or if you sit down with them or watch even some of their work, you go, like, they are funny. Like, watching Statham's movies, I was like, he's funny. I mean, you can't do in the movie Crank and not know you're not, you know, it's funny. And then Chris, you know, you just, I saw him host Saturday Night Live and it just, he's got a lightness about him. So it's fun to surprise an audience. And I, actually, I want to ask a question uh, regarding Fruits and Geeks as well, mm -hmm. because yeah. uh, it's very interesting that when the show came around like 15, 16 years ago, it was a commercial failure at the time, but mm -hmm. then you and Judd Apatow have both charted like big, uh, successful careers in film comedy, so do you, do, you, do you feel that there's a continuation of sorts from this sort of underdog, uh, bittersweet humor to how comedy is today? Yeah, very much so. I mean, that, that was the biggest problem that happened with us on Freaks and Geeks is we were, we were a little ahead of our time tonally just because every, comedy was still in kind of a big, jokey, over-the-top place. And, and I love, and Judd loves, behavioral comedy. You know, there were examples of it around, like the Larry Sanders show and that kind of thing, but it hadn't hit the mainstream. 
And so we were up against like a show like uh, called Malcolm in the Middle, which was a very funny show, but it was very big and broad. And that was the one that was a big hit. And we were just too painful and real, I think, for people. But what's happened over the last, you know, especially 10 years is behavioral comedy has become what people like. And, and I think it's because of the internet and because of YouTube, where we're watching so much stuff that's just real people in real situations mm -hmm. having things happen to them. And that's become funny to us in a way where almost if stuff's too jokey and too written, it does kind of bump us and feel old fashioned. So I think we finally kind of came, in, came into the right time period. Oh, hell no, the devil is a liar! <laughs>